For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Ebuoku. Amen. Today, I want to talk about an anointing that is very crucial to God. I call it the top anointing. And ultimately, I'm going to break it down into some practical stuff. But I see in the scriptures two places that stands out. If we look at it um, in deeper um, context, you'll see more places, three, four. But there are two places particularly that something stands out to God that I want to talk about. And today I want to talk about the man Job. Because the Bible tells us that God looked around the face of the earth. And the Bible says Satan came to Job in Job and chapter 1. And um, the Bible says in verse 8, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? You know, it's so easy to think about this. Just read about it and not think about it. Think about that statement. Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in all the earth. This is a very, very interesting statement. It's a statement that can shape a whole generation for God. It's a statement that if we have never, let's assume you just got born again. You've never been preached to by anybody. It's something that you come across that it, it can affect your life. It, 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 the, I don't see how anybody who calls himself a Christian should not come across this and not be challenged to study Job. What is it about Job? The beautiful thing about Job is that God has already told us what we want to know before we even need to study more. The whole answer is right here in that same chapter. It didn't just leave us confused. He says, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in on the earth. A perfect man. And an upright man. One that fears God and hates evil. One that fears God and hates evil. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 8. 13. Proverbs chapter, I hope I'm correct. 8, 13, 8 or 8, 13. Let me see 8, 13 first. The fear of the Lord is to hate all evil. Thank you. You see, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, hating evil is the beginning of wisdom. Can I say that again? So, when God is looking for people who stand out, what is the anointing? It's, 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 it's the oil of separation. It's a holy oil. It's a oil, oil that is of heaven. Uh, I've read that before in other topics where I shared you in Exodus how Moses, God called Moses says, now you're going to mix this oil of mire with the oil of uh, uh, cinnamon and uh, cassia and uh, calamine and uh, olive oil. And put it together in this kind of mix. Nobody must ever mix that type of oil again. Because it's holy unto the Lord. It shall be the holy anointing oil of God. And it's a blend of different things that represent Christ. So, so what it, one of the things you'll find out is that that mire there that I spoke of before. The, the mire is, is bitterness. is the suffering that we must suffer to do the will of God. So the fear of God brings us to the place where... We truly hate evil. I'm writing a book now. I think I, I'm going to call it Build Your House on the Rock. And that's one of the things I'm, I'm doing. I'm looking through the scriptures, particularly the New Testament. I want to find out every instruction that's been given to us about everything. The Bible is very explicit. We're going to talk about that, some of that today. I hope I have the time to do that. But, you know, the Bible is very clear. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So when God is looking to and for the earth, seeking to stand strong of those who have whose hearts are perfect towards him, you know that scripture, don't you? 
That's Second Chronicles 16, 9. The, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth. Re, re, remember what we read about, the, uh, what is his name? Job, he's a perfect man. Is that right? And what is his perfection displayed in? He's displayed in the fact that he hates evil. So, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth. Show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect. So, how is your heart perfect towards God? Thank you. Why? Because you have the fear of the Lord. When your heart is perfect before God, it means you have the fear of the Lord. And there's no need to deceive yourself. The way to know that you fear God is you have a strong aversion for evil. Anything that is sinful, anything that is iniquity, anything that is abominable, anything that sense of evil is so hateful to you. One of the easiest ways to know you don't fear God is the things that pertain to evil you don't fear. You are not afraid to lie. You are not afraid to cheat. You are not afraid to steal. You are not afraid to be angry and sin not. You are not afraid to, um, you know, do all the things, many of the things that the world does. You are not afraid to fight. You are not afraid to quarrel. You don't care whether you are not peaceable. You don't care whether you are not, you are not humble. You know, when you begin to know that the fear of God, you'll find out that one day Greg just stands out and he's with some people and says, do you know how many cars I have? Do you know how many, uh, how much money I have? Do you know how much this is, this is? And when you start talking like that with such pridefulness and such boastfulness, there's no fear of God. A lot of people I have seen are just lip service. And I have to check my own life for a lot of lip service. We have to be deliberate about it. Because we're now talking of something that stands out. God, is his heart is running to and fro. So this is captured over and again. As you can determine that you want to stand out to man. And I say this again, that a lot of what is called uh, church today and a lot of the ministers we have today are ministers of men. They seem to be more interested in helping men stand out to men. God is more interested in men standing out to him. And you don't stand out to God by being the best my MD or being the best uh, uh, academic or being the best uh, money man. You stand out to God by being the person who fears evil, who walketh righteousness on the face of the earth, who loves righteousness. He hates evil. And so we see the eyes of God going in the time of Job. And in the time of Job, what did he see? He saw his servant Job. Amen. To the point that he had to boast that, have you considered that there is none like him? Wow. What a bad time to be in the earth. What a bad time to be in the earth. Well, what a bad era. But then again, what a special time for someone like Job. How come that there's nobody like Job? If God is looking in our time now, what is he going to say about all of us here? I sit down and I ask myself that question. That's why I want to talk about Job today. I could have easily gone to Abraham, to Daniel and the others, and I will go to Daniel soon. But I, I want to talk about Job because I see this as this is the top anointing. And later on, when I get to Daniel, I will explain the top anointing more. But I want to begin to speak about the foundation of top anointing. It's top because God says, have you considered that there is none like him? That simple phrase, I can't get over it. There is none. Ah, that God's eyes were going around and then he found me. He saw that this guy is not pretentious. This is a real person who fears me. This is a real person who, you know, it's not in, in the empty words that we say today. A lot of people today, we hear these things, they gladden our hearts, but we go back and there's no real change. We still treat our husbands or our wives the same way. We still go to the office and it's the same thing we do. We haven't changed much. The same anger, the same malice, the same pride, the same everything. There's no brokenness. There's no molding, uh, chastisement of the Lord in our heart. And so God is watching. Listen, if the fear of God were truly in the hearts of um, people who profess Christ today, you will never hear of a divorce. You will never hear of a divorce. If the fear of God were truly in the hearts of 
God's people today. You will never hear that a Christian went to steal. No. Be fear. They, you know what they will be like? They will be like, 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 what's his name? Joseph. Can you find me that scripture where, where Joseph says, how can I do this thing? It's, 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 it's Genesis 30, 30 something, 35. He says, he says, he says, how can I do this great wickedness against my God? How can I do this great wickedness? Did you see it? Amen. Thank you. Look at this. See, listen, uh, the heart that fears God is clear. There will be a difference. He says, there is none greater than I in this house. Neither has he kept anything from me, but thee, my master's wife. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Listen, if, if we all have this type of heart, the truth is that a lot of what's called church is not church in the eyes of God. That's why God can look at sadists and say, you have a testimony that you are alive, but you are dead. The fear of God is not really in the church. The life of Job, what makes him stand out is that Job has the fear of God. When the fear of God really comes back to the church, people will hate evil. I'm not talking of, they will hate it because they hate it. Now people are just walking it. Oh, okay, they just remember. Oh, after they have finished lost it with all their eyes and mind. Oh, okay, okay, okay. God said I should not do it. Mm -mm. By the time, and guess what? Faith comes by hearing. I want to say, if this is so top and anointing to have, because God says his eyes looking for whose heart is perfect, and by so doing, he's looking for the person whose heart is hates evil, what do you think should be coming from all the pulpits around the world? What do you think should be a primary message coming from all the pulpits? Why? Because faith comes by hearing. We've just seen all around the country, I see all kinds of faith seminars going on around the place. They're bringing all kinds of people from all over the world who are teaching how to dance on the top of money and so on and so forth. Listen, the true faith of God, that God wants you to have the core, the major, the foundational thing is the fear of God. All this, you can have faith. Faith is wonderful. You can have faith in God and it can make you healed and you will still go to hell. You can have faith in God that will give you all the houses in the world. You will still go to hell. You won't, you won't stand out to God. Remember, Laodicean church, they were a very rich church now. They said we are rich and increasing goods. They, don't, they, they must have had some kind of faith that got them all these things. So we, we seem to be putting the cart before the horse. The foundational thing is do you fear God? And how do you know that you fear God? By hating evil. Now, let me show you a scripture about Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 5, start me from around 7, or not exactly 7. It says, who in the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers, talking about Jesus, with strong supplications and crying and tears unto him who was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. You've heard me talk about this many times. Think about it. Jesus feared. You and I, we know that Jesus did not fear demons. So who did he fear? He feared God. What did he fear? He feared that to offend God. Look at verse 8 and, and 9. He says, though he were a son. Remember, there's a comma there. He says, though he were a son, yet lends he obedience to the things he suffered. This is the anointing we are looking for. It's called the anointing of suffering. It's the oil of mire. Do you understand? You cannot see. See, the proof that you fear God is you will suffer. If Brother Bruno was to become, sorry, just imagine Brother Bruno comes to meet me now. And we get into a discussion. No, no. She said, shut up. So, come and assault me. I, I know I'm bigger than you, sir. <laughs> I'll just crush your bones in a second. So, just, just abuse me. This, this, this. He said, I don't agree with you. I don't agree. See, even his own is too soft, self. <laughs> Amen. Anyways, he riles me up to the point that I'm so angry too. God did not say that anger cannot tempt you. I'm angry to the point that I want to launch at him. What holds me back? 
If I'm truly, if I truly have fear of God, what holds me back? Is the anointing of suffering. It's an anointing that tells me, I, I, I fear God so much that let me suffer this thing. Let me suffer the insult. Now, to make matters worse, he's doing it in front of everybody. And then people are laughing at me, look at him, Swegbe, lazy man, weak man, big for nothing. Have you seen those, those big guys? They, those, I saw two guys came one day, one big and one small guy. And the big guy was the one doing do all the problem. He did it, the small guy beat the daylight out of him. Eh? They abused the daylight out of him. He was big for nothing. Agbaya. There's nothing they didn't call him. Now, you imagine you're in the, put in that position. And let's even imagine you don't have the strength or wherewithal to destroy this person. What holds you down? It, of course, it's the fear of God. How does he hold you down? You come to the place and you say, I fear God so much, I will take this pain, this shame, whatever it is. This anointing is missing. It's the, called the top, it's the highest See, the Bible says, though he were a son, he lends obedience by the things he suffered. If you don't suffer, you can never catch God's attention. You see, I keep saying it. There can never be a divorce in the church if we are teaching God's people are right and they are responding to God as he should. If they can contact this topmost anointing, Everybody's talking of anointing everywhere and they don't want to consider the mire. There is never anointing without mire. It's a waste of time. Mire is what mixes everything. It's the foundational thing. It's what Jesus had and it's what Jesus is distributing. Being made perfect. He was perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. You won't obey God without the fear of the Lord and you won't fear God if you don't show it from your suffering. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so now you can go to First Peter and chapter 4, verse 1, 2, 3, and maybe I do 1 and 2 or 1 to 6. He says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. You see this? What has Christ done? Suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourself likewise. In the same way. With the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Are you looking at this anointing? We have a whole generation that doesn't want to suffer in the flesh. There's so much pridefulness. What, what is pride? Pride is your inability to suffer. It's your, re, it's your refusal to suffer. It's your refusal to take anybody putting me down. I won't take this nonsense. It's your refusal to be humble. To, to, to allow even people trample over you. Or to take, get the better of you. It's your refusal to want to, to, to show I'm bigger, I'm better, I'm stronger. So your refusal to want to put yourself down. You, you, want, you must show it. I must prove it. Pride. Jesus didn't need that. So you, someone can come to the room and come here and just insult. Say, Faithlin, look at her. Just see what she, who are you? What do you think you are? Do you know how many um, uh, jobs I have? I'm the MD, I'm the general manager. And for all you care, Faithlin is a small senior MD than you. That ability that says, I don't have anything to prove to you. I don't want to show any, I'm, I'm nothing in my eyes. I hope I can get there today. I want to talk about some practical things the Lord has said to us. Maybe I'll just rush through some of the things. And, and so, as simple as this seems, this is what marks Job out. This is what makes God like others, not just Job, but it's so clear. Every God puts it in one verse, in verse 8. It says, have you considered him? There is none like him in all the earth. Stand out. He stands out. The eyes of the Lord have gone through and through the earth and found a man with a perfect heart. And that heart was found that this man fears God. How? Oh, he hates evil. He shows it. And how do, they, do you show hating of evil? He stood against it. He refused to lie with Potiphar's wife. We saw it in Joseph. He, that means where, wherever you see Job, imagine Job's life. As rich as he was, you know that every penny he got, he never got it by guile. 
God will never sanction such a person and say there's none like him. He was a very wealthy man. That means that Job probably brought his children up in the way of the Lord. That means that Job was not a person that uses his mouth anyhow. Because James tells us that if you want to find out a man who is really spiritual, look at how he's using his mouth. Then you will know a really spiritual man. A man who just talk, 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 shout, 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 shout. Listen. So this means, imagine Job. Job was not the type of person that was a, a violent person, aggressive person. He was a peaceable person. He was everything that God felt that, you know, he, he fears evil. He's not a part. Where they are doing idolatry, where there's covetousness, where there's mammon type of things, Job is so afraid. You, 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 in fact, everybody identifies him about that. Let me tell you something. It, this anointing is so missing that the average person who calls himself a Christian in his work environment, people do not identify you with that anointing. Yet he should speak for you. Everybody should be able to say, hey, this is Coley. If Coley is around, just know that you cannot, we're, we're not going to lie. We're not going to cheat. This guy is going to spoil our show. The people of the world. Where the people of the world are not comfortable to do bad business with Christians and they have no fear, your anointing is not speaking. We are looking for anointing that can give us money and emptiness. God is looking for anointing that can give him fear. Now we are distributing anointings that can give us all kinds of material things. God is looking for the anointing that can give us suffering. This is what is top most to God. That everywhere we are at, let God begin to change your heart. You watch out. I live with a community of people. Everybody, they, they must deliberately know that because of joy, She's not going to go that way. It will spoil the show. Because of Bruno, they, they are, it's not going to happen. Because of John, I mean, just know that this is a diff- It should be so constant. When you hear people swearing and using dirty language, they should know you can't do this here. It's not. See, now, do you know, even that topmost anointing, do you know how God has, uh, Satan has attacked it? He has attacked it over the years. When I was a younger believer, Almost 30 years ago, I remember that it was it was it was it was it was it was a not beautiful thing. But I saw that at the time I got saved, around that period, the word fanatical came out. I used to hear it every day, fanatic, the fanatic, the fanatic. All of a sudden it crept in, and then people began the things that speak of holiness, people began to look at it as fanaticism and became ashamed of it. Shame on the church. Let them call you any name. You're a peculiar person. I wrote a letter to somebody, a friend of mine, and he's a Christian leader, and, and he's, he's trying to engage in a, a direction that will become a, a legal problem, and, and he's not on the right side. I said, look, we are Christians. Let us do the things that are just, even if it costs us. I'm not going to do right because it's going to benefit me. I'm going to do right because right is right. And so I, I, you know, it's like some people don't understand this. So I asked myself, what are you learning? I remember a brother in this church, and I know he has my permission to say this. He told me how he competed for some elective, big elective position and spent so much amount of money. So I asked him, are you, how are you going to get that money back? Of course, as a pastor, it would be to my great pleasure for somebody to come here and say, ah, I have how many millions of naira we, uh, for, as a gift to the church. Oh, yeah. But that, we, we don't want that. We want the one that is good, that will take you to heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I asked him, I said, who was your pastor? Because surely you can't be in this church. You know that you can't be in this church. If you like to be in this church, if you bring a money that is too high, we will call you. It's the truth. We will call you. So if you already know that your money is not clean, give it to another church. Or give it to any other person if you like. Because we will call you the day you bring a big amount. We are waiting for that day. We need big amount, though. <laughs> well, make sure it's a pure big amount. Because if you, if you, if you, the truth of the matter is that the big amount doesn't matter as much to us that it is a righteous big amount. Not the one you will bring. EFCC will come and look for you, and then they will come and look for the pastor too. <laughs> and I'm so wise because I have accountability group, so I've given them the 
accounts to manage, so I just tell them, they are the ones. Look at, look at their, look for them. <laughs> Praise God. So, but, but you, you, you get the message. It's, listen, so now, this is where I want to land now. How do you think, what do you think happens in God's heart? You remember, God called Job. Have you considered my servant? Every time there is proof that a Christian is lying, a Christian is cheating, a Christian is stealing, what do you think happens to God? Remember, it's not, it's, it's, see, let me tell you what happened. Read your Bible well. Satan did not come and say, God, let's talk about Job. No. Where have you been? He said, I'm going from walking up and down the earth, seeking whom I'm going to devour. Then God, by his own self, it's as if he was just having an excited day. I, I bet you that day, Job must have done so many things. He has passed so many tests. Maybe that day, he went to his sister's uh, cousin's house. And as she got there, she just took off her clothes and said, lie with me. Joseph, go! Lord of Jesus! Lord of Jesus! And he ran away. And then God said, yeah, that's my guy. Then they brought some bananas and said, look, oh, this banana, is that your enemy? That guy is trying to fight you. We took it from his, 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 his uh, farm. We don't know about it. Somebody's going to buy it. No, no, that's wrong of you. And then he went. I know, I know, just, I'm just saying. So he just brought out his mobile phone. I know he doesn't have mobile phone. I'm just saying. So he brought out his mobile phone and he phoned his, his neighbor and said, I'm so sorry. See what this, my servants did. They, 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 they went and stole banana in your shop. Ah, we're going to arrest them. Then his faith, faithful servant said, see what you have done for us. Say, I'm sorry. That, that's the right thing to do. He leads us in the pathway of righteousness for his name's sake. So when a whole generation of Christians do not, are not conversant with this anointing, and we are conversant with covetousness anointings, anointings that have to do with our belly, we are a cursed generation. I'm sorry, it's the I, if we go deeper, as we are going to go deeper. This is the top anointing. It's the anointing that makes of God's people. It's, in fact, it's the anointing that makes God a celebrity. In all the heavens. It's the truth. If you want God, he says, Have you considered my servant? There's none like him in all the earth. He fears God. So you see God bragging. He like, he's like, I'm like a star. Why are we trying to make the people of God who are hungry, some of many are hungry to see God. I'm just speaking to my fellow brothers who are pastors. Why are we trying to make them stand out for men? Let's make God a celebrity. Let's make God stand out in the heavens by raising these people to fear God. Let's, let's preach the fear of God in all grace. So you know, fear, fear of God has grace. In fact, grace has fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 28. Do you know that the grace that people are preaching is empty grace? Grace without fear of God is empty grace. That's what Hebrews chapter 8, 12, 28 tells us. He says, so therefore, let us have grace. Can somebody read it to me together? One, two, let's go. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. What? Let us have grace whereby we may serve God with acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That's the scripture. You, you can't talk about grace if you don't know reverence and godly fear. He says, let us have the type of grace, the type whereby the kind, the grace that kind help us to serve God acceptably, the way he accepts, the way he will be a celebrity, not you. Free by the River is more than just a church. It's God's vision. It's God's vision for the times that we're living in. I'm a part of the vision. You should be a part of it. Join us.